Welcome to today's episode of How the Game Was Won. And today we're looking at the game between Kremlin with the white pieces, Topolov with the black pieces, played at the European Club Cup. And this specific game was played on the 22nd of October 2015. And without further ado, let's see how this game that was rated as super exciting by all of the teams going going into this round. See how the game had played itself out. Kremlin started off with d4 and we had knight f6, knight f3, e6, e3. And by playing e3, Kremlin effectively sticks to his policy of playing relatively unknown but definitely not unsound variations. The point with e3 is that there's lots of scope for deviations into many different uh, variances in the moves heading ahead, going ahead. Continuing c5, bishop d3, b6, castles, bishop b7, c4. c takes d4, e takes d4, bishop e7, knight c3, d5, c takes d5, knight takes and d5. And obviously we've got the classical queen's Indian under development over here. Continuing, knight e5, castles, queen g4, f5, queen e2, bishop f6, bishop c4, rook e8, rook d1, knight d7. And all of this has been obviously seen before, for, for example, amongst other uh, Polgo versus Bishop. But now, at this point, um, Kramnik brings about his novelty within the opening variation, which is all very much part of his home preparation. And he uncorks Bishop b5. Bishop takes an e5, d takes an e5, queen h7, knight takes an d5, bishop takes an d5, queen h5. And Kramnik goes probing up on the, on the king's side, trying to induce dark squared weaknesses on black's king side by trying to pressure him into playing something along the lines of g6, which would in induce huge holes in his dark squares. And he succeeds in that g6, so which, um, which allows Queen h6, rook e to c8, bishop g5, queen f7, bishop takes in d7. Now, Kremlik obviously realizes that the, with the exchange of the, uh, of the bishop for the knight, it's going to be, uh, just one way traffic. And, because in the opposite, uh, colored bishop middle games, it's a side with the initiative that has the better chances. And here white has the initiative because black's king side is weak and crucially what's happening here is that although it's an opposite color bishop um, middle game, white controls all of those crucial uh, black uh, king side dark squares with the bishop and pawn covering the f6 square, the queen covering the uh, g7 square, and should white drop the bishop down into f6 at some stage, then there's going to be major problems for black on that crucial g7 square. Going ahead, queen takes in d7, bishop f6, queen f7. Now, as I mentioned, now we've got the, both the bishop and the queen hitting out at that g7 square, which is really tenuous for the black king. b3, queen f8, Queen f4. Of course, the uh, from from White's perspective, the queen should be 
uh, an exchange of heat should be avoided at absolutely all costs. Rook c2, h4, rook a to c8, h5, queen e8, rook d3. And with the rook lift coming up on d3, obviously to swing across towards the king side, the white's uh, attack develops effectively like clockwork and there's precious little that black can do to to slow the progress. Because all that needs to happen is, for instance, the rook for in, for, to, to come across towards the h file, uh, black white to maybe push the g pawn, lift the king up, swing the, the other rook across onto the h file as well, and it'll just be one huge marauding attack running down the, running down the king side of the board. Bearing in mind that once the, for instance, once the, once the rook has come across to the, uh, to the queen side, or to, to, uh, to h3, white could, for instance, um, exchange off the h pawn onto the g file, which leaves an open h file, and then all that needs to happen is the white queen comes into, into h6, and immediately you've got rook pawn and so rook queen and bishop all hitting down onto that h8 square rook 2 to c3 rook a to d1 g takes an h5 and by playing g takes an h5 it allows an immensely strong combination for kramnik which is not uh, immediately obvious but Nonetheless, it's difficult to suggest a really, really good move for, for black in this situation. So, my suggestion to you would be to pause the video right here and see if you can come up with Kramnik's effective game-winning combination that he played in at this moment. Kramnik continued with Rook takes in d5. E takes in d5, e6. And just hit, looking back at, at this position quickly, white effectively did white sacrifice the, the exchange. First of all, the rook on c3 is, um, is under attack by the, by the bishop. Secondly, you just have to look at the position of that black king. Totally open, totally vulnerable. It's in desperate need of some sort of new protection. But that protection will be nowhere near coming. So by sacrificing the exchange, white removed the rook that could potentially come, come to black's aid in in line of defense. And also the exchange sacrifice was done in order to be able to open up some new lines for the white rook to be able to break into the black defense. Now you have now you follow on along with the combination of queen plus rook plus bishop which will be absolutely unstoppable. Rook 3 to c7, rook takes in d5, queen takes in e6, queen g5 check, king f8, rook takes in f5, rook f7, queen h6, and all of these calculations running up until this point are super easy for a player of Kramnik's string. Continue with king e8, rook e5, rook c6, and the move that sunk Topolov completely, queen takes an h5. And it's just simply a matter of time, and Kramnik is going to lose his queen. And after that, uh, he'll end up being a complete piece down, so he resigned. 
it's an incredibly smooth game for, for, for Kramnik and for a player that many people associate with uh, strategic positional type of building up uh, minuscule advantages. It's a brilliant long range combination played by, by Kramnik in a very much um, attacking sort of combinative type of tactical tactical display but then again in order to be able to play strong strategic positional chess you need to have an immense uh, understanding and ability to calculate long-range combinations because that's the key to positional play is to understand the combinations and when the when your positional development leads to the possibility of developing a combination, you need to be able to uncork it. Looking back, the move bishop takes d7 was the key positional idea of giving up your uh, your bishop to end up in a opposite uh, color bishop scenarios where your attack will slowly but surely be completely unstoppable. So that is how the game was won. Feel free to share this video out amongst all of your chess friends. Also remember to give me the thumbs up button if you like this type of video content, thumbs down if not. And down below the screen uh, before you, down below the screen is a is a comments block. Please feel free to share any comments, questions or criticisms about the video that you may have in order to help me to produce better video content for you going forward. And all comments that are posted below this video within YouTube will be receiving an answer from me personally. And last but by no means least, also down below the video screen in YouTube is a big red subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button that way you stay subscribed to my channel for all the new content that comes out to you on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. Stay carved up for the win out there, and until I see you next time for another episode of How the Game Was Won. Cheers.